Previously, I talked about the 18 electron rule, but we should really explore a bit more how to count electrons in the context of organometallic compounds. Now, I say that because we can really consider them in one of two ways. We can think of them as an ionic complex, or we can think of them in covalent terms. Now, a lot of the bonding in an organometallic complex would be more covalent, especially when it's involving carbon. Carbon likes to bond covalently. But we can consider them to be ionic, and we can consider that all of the ligands to be covalent. It just depends on which way you want to count them. So, there are really just two types of ligands. There are L ligands, that we call them L because they are neutral ligands. And in both the ionic way and the covalent way of counting electrons, they contribute two electrons to the count. So, pretty simple to remember and often, uh, yes, ionic and covalent, two electrons for that. So anytime you see an L ligand, it's donating two electrons. Now, an X ligand is are ligands that have a negative one charge. So the covalent and ionic models are going to be different electron counts. In the covalent model, they will only contribute one electron. And in the ionic model, they will contribute two. Essentially what this does is it considers that the negative one charge is actually on the ligand. Whereas covalent models consider that those electrons that the species came into the um, compound with kind of stay with their original owners. Now, how do we put this into practice? Well, we really just need to be able to classify what kinds of ligands are which type. And then when we go to count electrons, we just decide which model we want to use and then employ the appropriate amount of electrons for that ligand. So let's talk about X ligands first. So a single X ligand would be something like an al a metal alkyl. So uh, some kind of carbon group, say uh, CH3 negative, that could be a ligand, and that is a negatively charged one. Hydrides, also negatively charged. Halogens, such as chlorine, are negatively charged. Um, phenyl groups or aryl groups, those are very similar to alkyl groups, but uh, just to note, those are X ligands that would be, have a negative charge with it. It's a carbon. And then an allyl group with an A to 1 configuration would just be an X ligand. An allyl is uh, kind of like a vinyl carbon. That one would look like this where you would have a metal and then it's just bound to the car to the metal with at the one at one carbon the next kind of ligand are neutral ligands or l ligands and the l ligands uh, can come in a few different flavors. Here we have some lone pair donor or effectively kind of a Lewis base situation where we have a carbon monoxide that's a lone pair sigma donation uh, going into the metal. Um, ammonia or nitrogen based um, ligands and phosphine ligands. These are all neutral and they donate two electrons, the electron pair on uh, either the carbon, the nitrogen, or the phosphorus in this case. We can also have 
uh, pi bond donation in a sigma kind of fashion. So the double bond in between these two carbons is being used to bond to the metal. That is a neutral ligand and it donates two electrons from that. And you can also have the sigma bond involved in don electron donation. And that again is two electrons involved in that. So all of these are neutral ligands and they would contribute uh, two uh, electrons in either case. Now we can move down to here, which is an LX ligand type. This is both an X ligand, so it has a negative one charge on it, and also a neutral ligand contained in the same molecule. So in this case, we revisit our allyl, and now it's bonded in an A to three fashion, which simply means that it also bonds to the double bond here. So I'll just draw that right here. Sometimes it gets drawn like this, which emphasizes the fact that there's a negative charge right here and we have a double bond. Other times it gets drawn like this. indicating that realistically this double bond gets uh, distributed over the entire um, allyl group. And then we can also have uh, kappa-2 acetate, which is the acetate anion bound in two locations to the metal. So something like this. We've got the negative charge oxygen there. And then we have the carbonyl oxygen bound to the metal as well. So it's bound in two places. That's why it's called kappa two. We also have, uh, so that's the LX ligand examples that I have. Um, there are also L2, which would be eta two uh, butadiene or also cyclooctadiene. These are molecules that have two double bonds that can bond to the metal. And I'll try to draw that really quickly here, but sometimes it's, it's hard to uh, get a good picture of this. So we'll see what we can do here. So we have a cyclooctadiene. So there's two, or sorry, butadiene. So there's two uh, double bonds in there and the metal will bond to each one of those double bonds, kind of like that. Um, and then you have cyclooctadiene, which is a very similar uh, molecule just without the ring strain. Um, so we'll draw that one really quick here. Let's see here. So it's eight membered ring and you have the metal there. Side note, cyclooctadiene sometimes gets used in preparing catalysts for organometallic complexes because this particular ligand is easy to displace with others. But that doesn't really matter for electron counting. In this case, uh, since Oh, I should really go back up to here and talk about the, these um, LX ligands. So since they have a neutral ligand on there, that's two electrons. Now, if you're talking about the um, covalent model, then it would add an X ligand to that. So that would be three electrons for these. If you look at the ionic model, that would be four electrons. Now L2, since both of these are neutral, then we have two L2 ligands, each contributing two electrons. That's four electrons for one of these bound in that fashion. Essentially, it's simply just two uh, ligands that have a double bond in them, both bound. So just add them up. Uh, the oxo ligand is two um, X2 ligands. This is considered a negative two charge. 
on the oxygen. So uh, in the covalent model, that would be two electrons, but in the ionic, it would be four. So that's two X ligands. And then we have an important ligand, which is uh, A to five cyclopentadiene. Um, this has two double bonds that bond to the metal. So that would be four electrons. And then we have a negative charge right up here, which makes up the other X part of the ligand. So if, again, if it's covalent model, this would contribute five electrons. If it's ionic, then it would contribute six. So depending on which way you wanted to count it. And then we have the, a benzene ring, which can bond very similarly to uh, the metal, just like cyclopentadiene, except all of these are neutral. And so let's, uh, let's do a little drawing here of that. Actually, we'll draw the cyclopentadiene in real quick. So often this gets drawn like this. So indicating that all of these places are equally negatively charged. It's very similar to how our allyl case is. And with the benzene ring, it bonds in a very similar way, except it is a six-membered ring instead of a five-membered ring. And in this case, you have six carbons each bound to the metal. And so that would actually contribute six electrons because of the three double bonds producing three neutral ligands. So that's a little bit about how to count uh, electrons in organometallic complexes using either the ionic model or the covalent model. And we'll need to keep this list kind of in mind, but simply put, keep track of how many negative charges are on your ligand. If there is a, a negative charge and then there's also a double bond, uh, then you have your LX situation and you just kind of know how many electrons each one of those is. And that can make learning this list a bit easier.